Overclockers, I'm back. And a big thank you to Rob for handling the previous episode of BIOS Update. It's been a very, very eventful couple of weeks in the PC gaming world. And in today's episode, we've got plenty of new hardware to talk about alongside a new game from EA, the return of Cyberpunk and much more. Many of today's stories also have a blog post to go along with them. So make sure to check those out and let's get into it. Kicking off with the hardware chapter, which is jam packed. And after waiting a while for new hardware, suddenly we have many launches at once. AMD Ryzen 7000 came first with four new processor SKUs available to purchase now, alongside the brand new Z670 AM5 motherboards. The high-end AMD Ryzen 9 7950X has 16 cores and 32 threads, and it's gonna be perfect for content creators and enthusiast gamers at 780 pounds. The 12 core 24 thread Ryzen 9 7900X is primed for performance while you're gaming, and it's ideal for gamers who demand the best with a price of 59899. The AMD Ryzen 7 7700X has 8 cores, 16 threads and is great for gamers who are looking to upgrade from casual to more advanced gaming at $428.99. Finally, the Ryzen 5 7600X has 6 cores, 12 threads and is excellent value for money and ideal for gamers on a tighter budget at $325.99. The chips utilize the brand new AM5 platform with awesome new features and a design that will grow with advancing technologies. Similar to AM4's lifespan, AMD actually plans to support it through to 2025. All four CPUs include integrated AMD RDNA 2 graphics, which is an exciting move for AMD and it means you can actually play some of the games without a GPU. You also get access to next generation DDR5 memory and fast PCIe 5.0 storage, so you can get the most out of your gaming PC. We actually also created a dedicated video which will tell you all about the new Ryzen 7000 processors. And 8-pack, our in-house expert, was actually thoroughly impressed by them. There's huge gains to be had through overclocking up to a whopping 6 gigahertz on an all-in-one cooler, tuning the PBO2 settings and tweaking the memory. So make sure to check out that video for lots of interesting techie details that are going to help you get the most out of these new Ryzen CPUs. Look in the description below for links to anything that I've mentioned and for our pre-tuned and tested 8-pack bundles. The full range of CPUs are a great price on our website and of course you've got the X670 motherboards. I particularly like the unique looking ASRock Tachi Carrara which does match my bathroom rather nicely. Moving on to our next hardware story, it's been rumored for a while and Intel has moved to steal AMD's thunder with the announcement of their 13th generation Intel Core processors and new Z790 chipset. They won't ship until the 20th of October, but you can pre-order all six new SKUs right now. And the pricing is actually very competitive when compared to AMD's new chips. Raptor Lake features an improved version of the hybrid design that we first saw in Alder Lake, with a blend of P and E cores for each performance tier. The new high-end i9-3900K comes with a whopping 24 cores, 8 P cores and 16 E cores, and can reach up to 5.8 GHz max turbo frequency. In comparison, last year's 12900K had 16 cores and a maximum speed of 5.2 GHz. I definitely take these figures with a pinch of salt, but Intel claims the new 3900K is actually 15% faster than its predecessor in single-threaded tasks and 41% better for multi-threaded work like video encoding or 3D rendering. It's all very impressive, but I do think I'm gonna wait for those independent reviews before getting too excited. Currently, all I'm allowed to do is show you them in this very shiny, very pretty press kit box. So, when it comes to gaming, there is actually no comparisons just yet against AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 chips. However, the 13900K is supposedly up to 50% faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X and the CPU-intensive Spider-Man Remastered. 
The i5 and i7 chips also have a significant generational leap with four more e-cores each, which should help in multitasking and multi-threaded apps alongside a bump in the maximum boost clock speed. This set of new desktop CPUs is very exciting and Intel teased lower cost desktop parts as well as laptop CPUs would follow in the next couple of months. I'm actually well overdue a CPU upgrade myself and all these new launches have me itching to choose between red or blue. So let me know in the comments below whether your heart lies with the new Ryzen 7000 or Intel 13th gen. Yet yeah, another hardware story this week is actually one from Overclockers UK and 8-Pack. The 8-Pack Supernova first launched back in 2018 and this powerful PC packs high performance hardware into a stylish chassis. It's now been updated and there are four main upgrades on the 8-Pack Supernova Mark II. It now comes equipped with a fifth generation AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro CPU and new motherboard with WRX80 socket and custom cooling hardware. You now also get a massive 256GB of Octo Channel DDR4 memory and Windows 11 Pro is installed as standard. The AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5995WX CPU is the most powerful Ryzen CPU, even when you take into account that Ryzen 7000. This is because it has an insanely high 64 core and 128 thread count, ideal for professional workloads. Between AMD's Precision Boost 2 and tuning from 8-pack, this CPU can reach speeds of up to 4 GHz on threaded work and 4.75 GHz on single threaded loads. This creates a whopping 25% or 30% uplift in performance over the previous generation. Other areas of the 8-pack Supernova Mark II have remained unchanged and the new Threadripper is paired with dual NVIDIA RTX 3090 GPUs, a 2000 watt Superflower Platinum power supply and a huge amount of high-end storage. It's of course all then fully water-cooled with a custom loop and tested to ensure maximum performance. The 8-pack Supernova Mark II is definitely designed for more than just playing Fortnite or Call of Duty. It's primed for those creative and professional workloads such as rendering and other complex tasks such as digital encoding and running simulations. As with all of your Overclockers high-end PCs, the entire system is actually configurable to your needs, both aesthetically and in performance. So if you need that unbeatable performance and you do have really deep pockets to go with it, make sure you go along and contact the Overclockers Prestige Systems team. They can actually advise you on what you need and also spec the PC to your requirements. I'm gonna drop a link below to the 8-pack Supernova Mark II if you wanna check it out. Our final hardware story is that alongside Intel's new processors, we learned finally when UK consumers would be getting their hands on the Intel Arc A770 gaming GPU. The A770 is the company's flagship desktop graphics card and part of a trio announced so far. Intel showed this limited edition graphics card working for the first time at the Insomnia Gaming Festival and I was actually lucky enough to have a go at gaming on one. I did ask to see the FPS which of course was answered with a resounding no, however the performance is expected to compete with Nvidia's RTX 3060 and I must say I did enjoy a rather smooth and fun filled sim racing experience. It's also apparently very, very good at ray tracing and supposedly the A770 will offer 65% better peak performance in ray tracing than the competition. However, the competing hardware wasn't actually named, so it could be a GTX 1080 for all we know. In terms of specifications, the Intel Arc A770 is packing 32 XE cores, 32 ray tracing units, 512 Intel CE matrix extensions engines, as well as 512 XE vector engines. All those new names currently mean nothing to me, but it's essentially very similar to an RTX 3060, with the GPU clocked at 2100 megahertz. 
There will also be two variants of the Intel Arc A770, one with 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory and one with eight gigabytes. It's exciting to see Intel taking their first steps into the gaming GPU world, and I cannot wait to get my hands on one to try out the drivers and the gaming performance. We don't have the confirmed UK pricing just yet, but Intel will be launching the Arc A770 16GB and 8GB starting at $329 on the 12th of October. Going by the current exchange rate and adding VAT, you might be looking at around £390, which prices it somewhere between the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti and smack bang in the middle of RX 6650 XT pricing. With more affordable 40 series on the way and likely another Radeon launch at some point, Intel may have released the right GPU at the wrong time. Moving on to the gaming news chapter and our first story is about Cyberpunk 2077 and it's safe to say that the launch didn't go to plan and the game was been heavily criticised repeatedly over the past couple of years. However, as we near its two year anniversary, the hardworking developers at CG Product Red have managed to bring the gamers back on side. Thanks to SteamDB, we know that Cyberpunk 2077 has had a 24 hour player peak of 136,000. This is by far the highest in a while and the numbers remain strong with over 100,000 players regularly logging on to try out the new content. This number actually surpasses the studio's previous game, The Witcher 3, which had an all-time peak of 103,329 players on Steam. So what is making players give Cyberpunk another try? Well, it's likely to be the Edge Runners patch and accompanying anime with the same name. The Netflix series is 10 episodes of love story, drama and gore, and it's been very highly reviewed and it's actually expected to win multiple awards. It's a great way to get gamers reinterested in what Night City has to offer and the accompanying update finally does Cyberpunk 2077 some justice. There are many bug fixes and improvements as well as new Edge Runners inspired content, including brand new missions, clothing and weapons. The game also finally received its cross progression system for seamless game save across the different platforms. Best of all, all this brand new DLC is actually completely free. It's therefore an exciting time to give Cyberpunk 2077 another try, or if you're like me and yet to buy it, actually pick it up in one of the many Steam sales. The great content should keep coming as well, as also Cyberpunk 2077 is going to release the Phantom Liberty expansion sometime in 2023. Our next and final gaming story this week is that EA Originals have just revealed a brand new trailer for the upcoming Wild Hearts game. It's been developed in partnership with Omega Force, a division of Co Tecmo who is known for creating excellent combat titles such as Dynasty Warriors. This fantasy hunting game appears to be heavily influenced by Monster Hunter and the epic looking fantasy world called Azuma is inspired by Feudal Japan. The gameplay should provide a unique twist on the hunting genre where technology, trap building and exciting tactics gives you an extra advantage over the giant and rather exotic looking beast. There's the option to take on these creatures alone or hunt them with friends in the seamless co-op mode. There's not a huge number of further details just yet about the various combat and crafting mechanics, but hopefully we're going to be in for a treat when more information is revealed on the 5th of October. EA Originals have had some pretty big successes with It Takes Two and Unravel, so hopefully the AAA Wild Hearts can join the roster. It's going to be a next-gen title only, which does explain the eye-catching graphics, and you can get it on the latest consoles and Steam or Epic with a pretty close launch date of February the 17th, 2023. I'm going to drop a link to EA's Wild Hearts website below where you can check out the full trailer for yourself. 
Thanks for watching the latest episode of Overclockers BIOS Update. The end of 2022 is certainly shaping up to be a really, really exciting time to build a new PC. Let me know if you're thinking about going Intel or AMD in the comments below. Give this video a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon to get notifications, and I'll catch you again in the next one.